Thank you for joining us on Coffee Break, brought to you by the Middle Alabama Area Agency on Aging, or M4A. M4A is a part of a network of 13 area agencies on aging that cover all 67 counties across the state. We are located in Alabaster, and we cover Blunt, Chilton, Shelby, St. Clair, and Walker counties. We would love to find out how we can help your family today. For previous episodes of Coffee Break, feel free to check out our YouTube channel. started uh so if you are joining us if you're especially if you're joining us as we kind of started this process uh, just know that we will be recording this this will be on our youtube channel as well as it's live on our facebook feed so it's not if you're joining us in our facebook world uh we are pleased to have you join us as well as those that are in the zoom chat with us directly or the zoom webinar <laughs> Uh, this is Coffee Break. This is session number 21. If you're new to Coffee Break, this is an initiative that we started back whenever the pandemic first kicked off last year, early 2020. Uh, it is brought to you by two in-house programs, which are our Panda Project, our Alabama Cares program. Uh, this particular session of Coffee Break is going to be, we're going to be talking about exercise for everybody. And our guest speakers for today are, is our own wellness coordinator at M4A, Ms. Brianna Mahaffey, and a certified Food for Life instructor, Ms. Carolyn Strickless, who have both previously joined us on Coffee Break. Uh, so we're excited to have both back. Go ahead and kick things off. Again, this is uh, session 21 of Coffee Break. Uh, we've changed our Coffee Break. So if you've uh, kind of visited us in the past, we were doing it bi-weekly, but we put that back to the last Wednesday of every month, barring any uh, holidays or, or special events that we would prevent us from doing these. Uh, we are doing those in uh, a monthly last Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, one thing I did want to mention too, if you are joining us in the Zoom meeting, uh, if you come in late or if you're already in here, uh, there is a, a chat feature as well as a Q&A feature. So feel free to ask any questions in there. We'll be sure to get answers to those as well as if you are uh, viewing us live on Facebook, you can also drop a comment and we can try to make sure that we get any of those questions answered. So I'm going to pass it on to Ms. Brianna Mahaffey and kick things off. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Good afternoon, everybody. It is a pleasure to see everybody virtually. I hope everybody's having a great Wednesday. Um, so we're going to jump right into it. Um, we're going to start by doing seated Tai Chi. And if you don't know about Tai Chi, it's very good for arthritis. Um, fall prevention, there's different kinds of Tai Chi. Um, and 4A does have classes. Um, we have, we're holding them virtually right now, but what we'll do today is kind of just go through a sampler or an example of our seated Tai Chi workshop. Um, so if you like to join in with us, you can. If you'd rather just watch, that's okay too. But everything is going to be seated. And so if you just want to follow along, that's cool too. If you hear somebody banging on the door, that's the dog or my dad, either way, but just ignore them both. And <laughs> so here we go. So we're here, we're gonna start. Our shoulders are down and relaxed. We're gonna take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. All right, we're gonna start. We're gonna bring our arms up to about shoulder height. We're gonna bring them back down, kind of like our elbows to our rib cage. And what I like to think about is we're holding a ball, and we're gonna expand it and close it. Then we're gonna give a ball back to the friend and bring our arms down, all the way down. We're gonna bring them back up. And we're pressing out, like we're pushing a wall. We're gonna take that left arm and we're gonna move it slightly to the left side of our body, right outside of the left side of our body. We're gonna look over that left finger. And from there, we're gonna take our right hand and bend it. We're gonna bring that right 
our right hand towards our left elbow. Nice and slow. And from there, we're gonna switch and take our left hand to our right elbow and move through it. We're gonna do it again, that right hand to the left elbow. Two. Right hand, left hand to the right elbow, to the right. And then one more time, right hand to the left elbow. And left hand to the right elbow. It's kind of like Mr. Miyagi. You know, the karate kid. And from there, we're gonna come back to the middle. We're gonna press out again. Press that wall outside. And we're gonna move that right, our right arm to the right side of our body. We're gonna take that, our left hand to the right elbow, bend it in. And so we were going right before, now we're gonna go to the left. So let's take that right hand to the left elbow and turn. Right hand to the left, left hand to the right elbow, turn. Right hand to the left elbow, two. And one more, left hand to the right elbow, and three. Left hand, that right hand to the left elbow. Then from there, we're gonna have our ball again. We're gonna open, close, and give it back to a friend. So hopefully that was really, um, gave you a, mo a moment of just stress relief. Um, give you a warm up those shoulders um, and hopefully you're able to process and just be in the moment and do that Tai Chi. Um, we also do standing and that has, some footwork associated with it. But if you prefer to sit or if you have a caregiver or a loved one that has to sit, tight seated Chai Chi is a good option for them as well. Um, so next we're gonna have Miss Carolyn do some exercise examples for us. Yeah, go ahead and share my screen because that way I'm sitting here in a chair at the YMCA. Now you could, if you want to use some small hand weights, which are really easy to find. Walmart, Target, I think these were like $2.99 or $3.99 at Target. Um, and they're just two pounds. They're very light. If you don't wanna go and get hand weights, then you could use canned goods as well. And then also just a small bath, like a, not a bath towel, but just a hand towel might come in handy too for some of us, but we're gonna start without any equipment at all, except the chair, obviously. You can do this in a wheelchair. You could do this seated. So we'll just start with a quick warm up, which we'll start with just some arm circles. So just circling your arms back in nice little circles and then forward. Take some big breaths in. Circle the other way and release. Just getting those shoulders warmed up. Circle back again, one other direction. Woo. Then we're gonna do a quick W stretch. So hands to your thighs and then bring your hands back. Oh, and squeeze your shoulder blades together and down and back up and down. A couple more times up like a W and down. It's called the W stretch because your hands look like the letter W and back down. How about two more and down and one more and down. We're gonna get everything warmed up now. So take your feet out a little bit wider, arms come up and we're just gonna touch the opposite toes, fingers to opposite toes or anywhere on your foot you can reach, ankle, calf. And as you can see, because I'm in an orthopedic boot right now, I have an injury. So doing a chair exercise is a really good idea for me right now because I'm not doing a lot of things standing up. 
So we're touching opposite elbows, I mean, opposite um, hands to ankles or hands to feet, hands to toes, whatever you can reach. And then we're gonna cool that down just a second, roll your shoulders back. Let's get some upper body first. So if you have any canned goods, great. Just a can of beans. I'm just using some canned garden soup. <laughs> so you can just hold it up and push one up, push the other up, push one up, push the other up. And just alternate arms up, arms up. Ooh. And these are just one pound, actually not even a pound, 15 ounces of soup. You could do this without them. One arm up, other arm up. But if you want to add to it, you could add the soup or other canned goods, or you could add a bag of beans. You could add a bottle of water. So two bottled waters, that works too. And push up and let's stop one more. That's really good. All right, so great for your shoulders. We're gonna go back to legs again really fast. So I'm just gonna do some quick leg lifts and I'll turn a little bit sideways so you can see what I'm doing. And then we're just gonna lift one knee, lift the other knee. Lift and lift. If you cannot do that, you could use a towel. This is just a hand towel. Put it under your thigh and lift. So you want to get some good flexion in your hips. So lift and lower, lift and lower. And this is also giving you bicep work. So lift and lower, lift and lower. Especially if you are wheelchair bound, and you cannot lift your legs, this is a great way to still get hip flexion and get an upper body workout. Up and down, up and down, and then switch to the other leg. Up and down. And keep breathing, make sure you breathe through this. And then set that back down. All right, so if you are able to lift your legs, you can do that without the towel, just lift and lift. And then we could go to something called fast feet where you just do that much faster, up and down, up and down. And you're feeling your core work a little bit too when you do that. Ooh. Couple more, three, two, and one. Ooh, goodness. And then we're gonna kick it out from here. So. Holding on, if you have a chair with handles or rails, you can take your feet to the floor and then lift one leg, kick it out. Lift the other leg, kick it out. Lift and lower, lift and lower, lift and lower. You should feel this a little bit, obviously in your quads, but you'll also feel it a little bit in your hamstrings when you lift, lift and lower. Couple more on each side. Woo. And then we'll turn it back to the center and get those cans again or small hand weights and take your hands right here next to your legs and just lift up and down for some bicep curls. Just a few more. Two and one, and then doing maybe two or three sets of those, maybe 10 reps each is a really good bicep workout. And then we'll work on the outside of your arms, your deltoids, take your hands down to the side, palms facing in, and then just lift them up to the side. You could do one arm at a time. If it bothers you to do both of them at the same time, just do one of them at a time, that's fine. Up and down. And maybe 10 reps of that and then take a breather and do do another set of 10 of those, um, maybe two sets, two or three sets of those. And then we'll take it out front, palms facing down on your thighs, and just lift it out front, lift it out front. Just alternate sides up and down. Upper body strength is so important. And we lose a lot of it as we get older. So continuing to work on upper body strength as we get older is very, very important. 
And remember, these are things you can do seated in a wheelchair. It's perfectly fine to just stay seated the entire time. But we can do one other thing that works on upper body strength. If you have a chair like a wheelchair or a chair like this one that has arms on it. So these are just chair push-ups. So hands down, we're not going to go up all the way. So hands on there, hold on nice and tight and make sure it's a chair that's not going to tip backwards. So one with a nice wide base. Take your feet out wide, maybe shoulder width or a little wider and just push up and down, up and down, up and down. Really, really good for the triceps. So those are the ones that, you know, when you were writing on the blackboard and you have something flapping under there, those are your triceps. So lift and lower, lift and lower. As many of those as you can do, maybe 10, if you can get eight to 10 of those in a row, that's a really, really good upper body workout right there. And then we can get more triceps by taking the cans or small weights, taking them straight up and then drop them behind your head and up, behind your head and up. So triceps again, up and down to the ceiling and behind your head, to the ceiling and behind your head, up and down, maybe 10 of those. One more. Woo, yeah. So those are some good examples of how to exercise in the chair. And then when you want to cool down at the end, after doing a few more sets of all of those things, then a nice cool down is what we call the hallelujah stretch. So hallelujah, take your hands back and back in together, maybe into prayer hands, back, hallelujah, and back, reach back. Oh, it feels so nice on your back and your shoulders. Reach back with both hands, hands come back to the center. Both hands back and hallelujah and back to the center. Just a couple more. One more. Ooh, that feels so good on your shoulders and opening up your chest. You can also use the chair. If you have, especially if you have one that has handles like this, turn both hands to one side and turn and look over your shoulder as far as you can comfortably for a nice torso rotation and then turn back to the center and then slowly to the other side, turn, look over the other shoulder and breathe and back into the center and then a big breath in. and cool it down. So those are some examples of ways to do upper body and some lower body strengthening while seated and a couple of nice stretches you can do while seated. So if you have any questions, um, please let us know. Those are awesome, awesome workouts. When we get back to the senior center, I definitely, those are, you show some new ones. So I'm excited to be able mm -hmm. to show those to the, to the seniors at the senior centers as well. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. So we just wanted to talk um, for a few uh, moments about how extra, you can get some exercise for your loved ones as well as yourself or the caregiver. So we actually got this from the National Institute of, of Aging. Um, here are some tips to help people with Alzheimer's stay active. We can start by helping to get the activity started or joining in to make the activity more fun for them. We wanna be realistic about how much activity can be done at time. Um, doing mini workouts may be best. So you can do little 10 minutes or even two to five minutes spurts. Getting those mini ones in multiple times a day would be great. Taking a walk together each day because exercise is good for caregivers as well. Making sure your loved one has an ID bracelet with your phone number if she or she walks alone. Um, check your local TV guide to see if there's a program um, that helps older adults exercise. Or you can watch exercises made for older people. There's tons of them on YouTube. Um, you can add music to the exercise if it helps. Dance to the music if possible. I like to add fine music from their, their when they were younger what really was hip 
to them, they really enjoy songs that they remember um, or might remember. Um, you can break those exercises into simple, easy to follow steps. Um, kind of like Ms. Carolyn was showing, some modifications can definitely be added to any exercise. Um, we wanna make sure that person wears comfortable clothing and shoes that fit well and are made for exercise. And then wanna make sure he or she drinks plenty of water or juice after exercise. Um, even if people have trouble walking, they may be able to do simple tasks around the home, like sweeping, dusting. They can use stationary bikes, um, stretching bands, rubber exercise balls, or even something outside like gardening, um, bowling, in-house bowling with the little pins, dancing, swimming, tai chi, or walking. Can you go back to the last slide? Sorry. Um, and here are some extra things for um, caregivers to, to use. This was provided by the AARP. You can walk and work out with a purpose. A lot of times we only have small bursts of time that we may have to ourselves. So working out with a purpose is very helpful. We can do strength training. We wanna make sure we get enough, 30 to 40 minutes at least three times a week. And it doesn't have to be at the same time of day or the same length of time of day. You can say, okay, here's my chance to do it in the mornings. Let me go ahead and do it now. If I have 10 minutes, if I have 20 minutes, let me go ahead and do it when I have a chance. Um, next, we wanna challenge yourself. We wanna get that heart rate up. Um, I like to say sweating is sparkling. A lot of people say, I don't sweat, I sparkle. So sparkle on. <laughs> and then lastly, we wanna keep it simple. Simple workouts could be walking. Walking is good for the mind. It's good for the body. It gets the blood flowing. It gives you a chance to just kind of be by yourself with the elements of outside. Or you can walk indoors um, at the office. We were able to walk as a group, pre-pandemic that is. We walked either outside on nice days, but we also looked on YouTube for walking videos. And that was really helpful because it got us up out of our office, off of our desks, and gave us a chance just to get that blood flowing. Um, and again, those exercise videos at home, there's plenty on YouTube. There are um, finding a workout for you, exercise for everybody. On our next slide, I think this was also brought to you by the National Institute of Aging. Um, it just mentions getting fit so you can do more and the four types of exercising that you'll get the most benefit from. Um, endurance, strength, balance, and flexibility. So with that endurance, it can just be simple things, climbing the steps or dancing, dancing the night away. Um, strength or lifting groceries, carrying grandchildren or dogs, something that you're able to lift um, that's not too strenuous. You don't wanna be out here lifting desks or beds. Number three is balance. So you can prevent falls and unrelated injuries. Good things to use are walls or chairs, um, chairs without wheels, that is. That way you, you have something nice to start and steady. And then number four is flexibility. So that could be driving or getting dressed. When you're driving, you have to turn that neck to look side to side. Or getting dressed, you have to move your arms and your legs to make sure you're comfortable. So those are just daily things that we do um, to, that could be exercise that we may not think think of as exercise, but that could be considered exercise. Hi, I'm Carolyn Strickland. I'm a Food for Life instructor with Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and a graduate of Cornell Center for Nutrition Studies. Today, I'm making for you a green monster smoothie, also known as a going green smoothie. Um, it's called a green monster smoothie because it kind of ends up looking like an ogre. <laughs> so it's a really interesting color and very, very good for after exercise. So it has spinach, it has green grapes, pineapple, banana, water and ice, that's it. So we're gonna start with a half a cup of water, one cup of green grapes, a half a cup of pineapple. Now I like to get fresh pineapple. 
but you could use frozen. I think canned would probably be the least optimal. If you want to have a really nice, bright, refreshing flavor, go with fresh pineapple. We get it already cut up at Whole Foods like this. You could buy a whole pineapple and cut it up yourself, but you just need a half a cup. And then two, a half a banana, peeled. Obviously, you want to take that peel off of there. And we'll just stick that half a banana in the blender and then two cups of spinach. Now, if you have a history of kidney stones, you might want to switch to something like kale instead, baby kale, because spinach is pretty high in oxalic acid. Um, and we know oxalates form kidney stones. If you have too much, if you have a history of kidney stones, maybe try baby it. kale in it instead. Um, and then I have a half a cup of ice cubes. And that's it. I'm going to whirl that all up. And there you have a green monster smoothie. Absolutely delicious, really great for after exercise. There are some studies that show that spinach can help decrease muscle fatigue and muscle soreness or increase muscle endurance. So give it a try. It is really, really delicious for post-exercise and it's just a really cool color too. There we go. And drink up because it's absolutely delicious. So um, I actually work at the YMCA and most of your local YMCAs are going to have something called Fit for Life classes. And that those are classes specifically designed for our older, our older um, students who come here to the Y, our older members. Um, my mother takes Fit for Life classes at her YMCA in Wetumpka and she loves them. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 o'clock. She does not want to miss that. Um, she really loves it. And we also have some condition specific classes such as um, Rock Steady is a class that we offer at our YMCA's here in the River Region um, that are specifically designed for people with Parkinson's disease or any other neurological condition, Rock Steady. So you might want to look into classes near you. Um, in addition to that, there's actually Alabama Public Television every morning at 5.30 has a 30-minute chair workout class that you can watch and do it along with the woman. I forget what her name is, Marianne Williams or something like that, but she does a class every, um, and it's, it's videotaped, but so it's not live, but every, I believe it's every morning at 5.30, Monday through Friday on Alabama Public Television, and it's called Sit to be Fit, and it's, you sit in a chair and get your workout while seated, so I recommend that. It's a, a she does a really nice job. So I'm not sure about other, um, otherwise in uh, maybe Alabaster, Jemison, that area, but I'm pretty sure Fit for Life is something that's at most YMCA's around the country. YMCA has some good resources um, and Silver Sneakers as well. Also yes. might have cult classes um, at local gyms or anywhere near you. Um, so, pre-pandemic and hopefully one, as the senior centers are opening back up, we'll be able to have exercises at those senior centers. But we also have two, M4A has two opportunities for exercises that are virtual at this time. So like we did earlier, we have that Tai Chi for Health. This flyer is the oldest for our workshop that just finished, but it gives you the idea. We call them Tai Chi Tuesdays. They're once a week, we met for six weeks. Um, and we just did each session of Tai Chi. It wasn't long, maybe 30, 45 minutes. Um, and then with the information to register. And then we have what we call Living Well Alabama, which is the chronic disease self-management program that we have and offer. Um, this is also six weeks, it's free. And we talk about different things, better breathing, healthy eating, communication skills. And there are some exercises and fitness in the new program. Um, we are trying to get a new workshop started in the next few weeks or month, um, but you can check all that out on via our website or on our Facebook page as well. 
Um, are there any questions? If you have any questions, I think you can put them in the chat. Uh, or I don't I don't see any on the Facebook feed, and I don't I don't see any on here as well. So as as normal, I guess that means that you guys have uh, answered all the questions during the demonstration. So, um, I, Jennifer, did did you see anything that maybe I missed? I don't, I don't see anything at all hand. No, I don't see anything. Well, we're going to move on into M4A then. Uh, again, thank, thank Brianna and Carolyn both for joining us. I know that uh, it, everybody's got busy, busy schedules, so we always appreciate when our panelists drop in to, to give us an hour of their time and really to, to provide caregivers with a, a brief respite moment to kind of kick back and, and uh, take a little bit of time for themselves. So uh, again, thank you guys. We're going to move on into M4A and kind of who we are especially for those that maybe have joined us for the first time. Uh, we always try to dedicate a few minutes at the end to kind of go over who we are, what we do, and, uh, and see how we might be able to help you and your family. So M4A, of course, is the Middle Alabama Area Agency on Aging. It's much easier to uh, go by our acronym M4A, so that's usually how people refer to us within our region. Uh, M4A operates, uh, as far as the aging network, we're a part of 13 local area agencies on aging that cover all 67 counties across the state. Uh, as a network, our, our mission statement is to help those uh, within our communities age in place. And we do that by providing supportive services to individuals directly, as well as their families to kind of help uh, add those, those factors uh, and, and to improve quality of life. Um, our mission specifically for our agency at M4A is to empower individuals people living with disabilities and their caregivers to self-advocate as, well as, as well as live independently and safely within the communities of their choice. And our own uh, personal motto here for our agency is assisting all ages and all stages. We typically have that on pretty much every piece of promotional material you find. You usually see our logo accompanied by that statement. Uh, the counties that we serve are Blunt, Chilton, St. Clair, Shelby, and Walker County, as well as Jefferson County, specifically for our senior employment program. Uh, how it really begins for our agency is through our ADRC, or Aging and Disability Resource Center. Uh, that typically is kind of the starting point for us. It's, they serve as a, a single point of entry for long-term care support and services. And so really the way that that works is, is you can contact our agency directly at 205-670-5770. Uh, you will be greeted by one of our receptionists who will get you in contact with one of our ADRC specialists who will schedule an appointment with you or maybe even in real time be able to do a full benefit screening to see what services uh, either the person that you're calling on behalf of or yourself to see uh, kind of what's available within your area. Now, if you're, if you're listening to this video and you're not within one of the region or one of the counties that I mentioned on the previous slide, you can find out who covers your area by calling 1-800-AGE-LINE. That's our statewide toll-free number and they will get you connected to the agency that covers uh, your area specifically. All right, so if you're not really into phone calls or in-person interviews initially, you can also do a referral on our website, which is www.m4a.org forward slash referral. Uh, there's two buttons there. You see make a referral and get help. Uh, of course, if you're calling on your own behalf, you can click the blue get help button and it will take you to another screen, which I believe I have some screenshots here. Uh, this of course is the make a referral, but it's a similar uh, screen that you would see if you were doing it on your own, and it'll kind of walk you through some questions, uh, some of the services that you might be interested in. And then once you submit that information, whether it be yourself or uh, you know, doing it on behalf of someone else, that will then notify our agency. So we make sure that we follow up. And it's really the same way, uh, the same uh, situation that you would be going through as far as if you were calling in, it's just a more efficient way. We like to consider it quicker and, and more efficient way to do it. So if you are tech savvy, we do recommend you do that because that seems to be pretty beneficial for those who use it. Uh, some of our core service programs that are offered across the state. Now these are, are uh, offered from our other agency, our partner agencies, the other 12 across the state. Uh, some of these may be in-house, some of them may not be in-house, but they, they should offer this service as part of their, their core programs there within their facility. And those range from our nutrition services. So we have um, homebound meals programs, as well as a strong partnership. Brianna previously mentioned uh, with the senior centers, we have a, a strong partnership 
with the senior centers across the state where we help to provide uh, meals through their through their facility as well as uh, you know just gen general partnerships where we host events uh, we also have of course caregiver support programs like our alabama cares program i myself am the alabama cares coordinator for our uh, region and so we have that that program is offered statewide which just offers supportive services for caregivers whether that be uh, with temporary respite to supplemental supplies to just general education and support uh, to, to kind of be that, that ear for the caregiver and the shoulder to lean on. Uh, we also have a medication assistance program called Senior RX, where they work directly with manufacturers to uh, potentially offer low cost or no cost drugs if there seems to be a, a gap in coverage or uh, maybe there's a situation where you're, you're having to pay uh, for specific drugs, you might be able to to work. Ms. Janey is the coordinator for that program. She might be able to work with, with you directly to see how she might be able to help kind of mitigate those, those costs and, and kind of get you some assistance. And uh, kind, of, kind of going off that into another medication program, we have insurance counseling, which is our SHIP program. Uh, each year during open enrollment, Ms. Latoya, who runs that program, she does a great job with uh, comparing plans from a non-biased approach to see which Medicare plans might be best suited for your situation. And uh, the Senior Employment Program, which, which we just discussed, is in the Jefferson County program as well. But in short, that program provides uh, some, some on-the-job training for individuals who are looking to get back into the workforce. Uh, there's specific criteria for most all of our programs, and the Senior Employment Program is no different. There's a certain age criteria that you have to meet, and they can kind of work with you to hopefully find uh, one of our partner agencies across the six county region for that to, to, to kind of get you back into that workforce. So hopefully that could be something that could benefit you as well. We also provide legal assistance with our uh, an attorney partner out of the Opelika area. Uh, she's on with us quite a bit. She'll probably be on another uh, coffee break episode in the future, but Ms. Jan Neal out of Opelika, she's an expert when it comes to elder law and she helps to provide a lot of those services to our you know, individuals across our community who are looking for things like powers of attorney. Uh, I think she can help with some other things as well. So that's always a great resource to kind of tap into if you're needing some, some legal guidance there, especially as it relates to long-term care and long-term care planning. We also do several different uh, programs similar to Coffee Break with our elder abuse prevention. Uh, as By nature, we're really all kind of tapped into being um, elder abuse prevention and elder justice. So always look for those on our social media feeds. And then of course, our two, uh, our long-term care program, the Medicaid waiver program, which in short brings services into an individual's home to kind of help delay long-term care placement. And as well as our ombudsman program, who's, who's uh, in short, the, the individual who's kind of in between the, the resident of a facility as well as the facility itself. So they're kind of the, the, the group that would and if you've got any issues, they can help kind of look into those to make sure that your stay within a long-term care facility is as uh, great as, as possible. Some of the programs that we have for our, our agency in particular that are unique to us, the Panda Project, who is one of the, uh, the co-hosts for this, along with the Alabama Cares Program. Uh, Panda is a grant that we received specifically for dementia-related diagnoses in the Shelby County region. Uh, so we have that program. We also have a dementia-friendly initiative where we train first responders within our communities to, uh, to hopefully help uh, with, with interactions with those living within the community who have a dementia-related diagnosis, as well as their family members. Uh, Ms. Brianna, who, who has been speaking on this uh, webinar, she's with the Living Well Alabama program, which is also another grant program we've received. She does a lot of things within the community all across our, our five-county region. We also have a critical needs fund, which we are uh, growing every day. Uh, hopefully that'll be something that we uh, can continue to, to build up where we can maybe fund some of our uh, initiatives in the, in the community, like our AIM Community Service Project you see there, you see at the bottom there that provides uh, home modifications, things like wheelchair ramps, grab bars, things like that that are needed to help promote independence within the home. We are on social media. Uh, as Brianna mentioned, she has a Facebook page for Living Well Alabama. We also have an M4A Alabama Cares page. We have a Panda Project social media uh, or Facebook page. 
We also have a page dedicated to just M4A as a whole. So check those out. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And you can also catch us on the other. We're not quite as active on Twitter and Instagram, uh, but we do post these videos on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check those out. Now, when you first visit our Facebook, I mean, excuse me, our website at www.m4a.org, you will be prompted to join our newsletter. We do encourage you to join that, especially if you're a caregiver or if you're uh, you know, just an individual wanting to know what's going on in, in the area. Uh, we always post things in there each week. We also have, that's a great resource for professionals who are looking to kind of stay in the know with benefits and resources to, uh, to, to help better serve your, your clients and your families that you care for. This is our contact information here. Uh, we are in Alabaster, kind of in the Saginaw area. But there's our contact information as well as our website and our physical and mailing address. Uh, we, again, th this is being recorded. So we will have, if you need to, to stop the video to, to get this information, please feel free to do so. We have scheduled coffee break for next month. We don't exactly have a topic yet. It will be surrounding heart health. So just be on the lookout for that. Uh, go ahead and put it on your calendar. It will be May the 26th from 1 to 2 p.m. And again, we will be talking about something heart health related. We're not real sure who our panelists are gonna be yet, but there's an RSVP link that you can go ahead and kind of pre-register, get, get RSVP for that. Get it on your calendar and join us next time. So uh, we look forward to that. And again, if you have any topic suggestions, we, we cut these back to once a month. But if you've got any suggestions where you think would be a, a great uh, resource to be covered, as well as uh, shared with our communities, just make sure to drop that email suggestion at panda or to panda at m4a.org. So I don't see any questions. Uh, I don't think we have any on our Facebook feed as well. So if we have nothing else, uh, again, thank you, Brianna and Miss Carolyn, for joining us again and coming back to join us for uh, multiple. I know Miss Carolyn's been on a few times this year, so we always appreciate her dropping by, especially uh, being from a from a neighboring community down in Montgomery. So thanks again. Uh, we appreciate the the information that you guys brought, and we will have this video posted on our social media feed within the next few days. So look out for that and let us know if we can help with anything with your family. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to serving you guys in the future and seeing you next month on Coffee Break.